So where we go from glucose to our products of carbon dioxide and water, again, the equation to be familiar with, C6H12O6, so that's glucose plus oxygen, will then yield six molecules of carbon dioxide, six molecules of water plus ATP. So pyruvic acid, which was the breakdown of that six carbon ring into two, three carbon structures of pyruvic acid, then will leave the cytoplasm and then enter the interior matrix of the mitochondria. Carbon dioxide is also removed at this stage to form acetic acid. So energy is released in small enzymatic controlled steps and not in large amounts of heat. Then acetic acid is combined with coenzyme A to form acetyl-CoA, which acts as a substrate for mitochondrial enzymes in the aerobic pathway. So one molecule of glucose will make two molecules then of acetyl-CoA and two molecules of carbon dioxide, which carbon dioxide then is just going to be carried out through the blood and then will be exhaled. So acetyl-CoA or citric acid then starts the citric acid cycle or also known as the Krebs cycle. And this is a process where we have eight different biochemical reactions that are directed by enzymes within the matrix of the mitochondria. Again, the matrix was that space of the mitochondria. And so this is important because it preps the hydrogen carrier molecules to enter into the electron transport system, where there is where we'll generate the bulk of our ATP. So what we have occurring is that, again, after glycolysis, when we have oxygen present, we have the pyruvic acids are going to cross into the plasma membrane, into the cell, and then form molecules of acetyl-CoA, or also known as citric acid. And then here, we'll generate and begin the process of acet the citric acid cycle. So what happens here is that we have the production of one guanosine triphosphate. And so what that does is it helps to donate a phosphate group to ADP to make adenosine triphosphate, so ATP. We also have three molecules of NAD that are reduced to NADH plus hydrogen. And then also we have one molecule of FAD is reduced to one FADH2. And so these events occur for each acetic acid, so it happens twice for each glucose molecule. So these are going to be the products that are generated with the citric acid cycle. So we would have to times that by two for one glucose molecule. So at the end, when we tally all this up, we have six NADHs, two FADH2, we have two ATP, and then we have four molecules of carbon dioxide, which then will be, ex will be carried by the blood and then later will be exhaled via our respiratory system. The next stage after the citric acid cycle is the electron transport system and oxidative phosphorylation. And so both of these are considered to be aerobic because now we are requiring oxygen, okay? And so now this goes from the space of the mitochondria and it moves into the folds or the cristae of that mitochondria. And again, if you remember, there was lots of surface area for this process to occur. And so that serves as the electron transporters. And this is where we have the bulk of our ATP that is going to be produced for different cellular activities that we need for other cells in the body. So if we look at the electron transport chain, what we have is that the electron transport molecules pass electrons down the chain. And so here, this is kind of a complex figure, but if we look here, citric acid cycle, and so hydrogen is going to be donated to make NADH. And so NADH then is going to start the process of the hydrogen 
and electrons now jumping and jumping and jumping. And so that releases energy so that ADP can now make ATP. And so there are several rounds of it, again, because of the large surface area for that criste on that mitochondria. Now the continuous supply that we have of these hydrogen ions are due to hydrogen or proton pumps that pump hydrogen from the matrix into the space between the inner and outer membrane. So here in this green line that I'm drawing right here, okay? And so the movement of hydrogen across the membrane is able to provide enough energy for the enzyme ATP synthase to convert ADP to ATP. So one glucose molecule then in the end will yield anywhere from 30 to 32 ATP because of that proton being shifted. So energy is needed to move ATP out of the mitochondria into the cytoplasm. That's why it's not the standard 36 ATP molecules that you might have learned um, in previous uh, years. And so the last pump is going to be ATP synthase. And what that does is it moves hydrogens across the membrane and it drives phosphorylation. And so we have ADP being transformed to ATP. And so this has to be with oxidative cut uh, measures where it removes and transports electrons. And so thus, this is going to be an extragonic reaction because we are making ATP or energy. So the very important factor for all this to occur is that oxygen needs to be present because it is the final electron acceptor. The citric acid cycle and electron transport require oxygen to continue. If oxygen was not present, then this would stop the whole process. One other thing that we have is with oxygen, it binds with four electrons and four hydrogens. And so one of the byproducts is water. So part of cellular respiration as well. So now let's compare the difference between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So here we have anaerobic conditions. So we generated only two ATP from the breakdown of one glucose via glycolysis. So glucose is converted to pyruvic acid. And then, if there's no oxygen present, then that will continue on to make lactic acid. Because if you remember, it was NADH is going to be the organic molecule that acts as the electron acceptor. And so that can continue until these concentrations of lactic acid are not high enough or detrimental for the body. And so here, this is not, this is only occurring within the cytoplasm. So here, this purple cytoplasm of the cell. Now with aerobic conditions, so when oxygen is present, we have glucose will still undergo gly glycolysis, okay? So we'll still have two ATP that are produced to make two molecules of pyruvic acid. Then it will cross the mitochondrial membrane enter the citric acid cycle to make acetyl-CoA, and then that will carry on to the electron transport chain, where oxygen, again, is the final electron acceptor, and that will yield somewhere between 30 to 32 ATP. So that's a little bit outdated in terms of that estimate, but also yield carbon dioxide and water as a byproduct. So carbon dioxide, again, we just exhale as it's carried from the blood first, and then water also will be one of the byproducts. 